Hello, I'm Jack Gura. I'm Adam Forsyth. And I'm Shakti Shrema. Our presentation today is about the Hurwitz quaternions. Quaternions are numbers used in information science and in quantum field theory, amongst other things. In our project, we turn an abstract problem in number theory into one in geometry. Now, before we can discuss our project further, it's important to talk about a perhaps more fundamental and familiar domain, namely the integers. Now, it's well known that every integer has a unique prime factorization. We can extend this notion to the complex numbers by defining the Gaussian integers, complex numbers with integer coefficients. The Gaussian integers also have a unique prime factorization, though perhaps in a less obvious sense. The Gaussian integers have unique prime factorization up to multiplication by units. So for instance, the Gaussian integer 3 plus 5i admits the factorization 1 plus i times 4 plus i. If I multiply the first factor by i and the second by minus i, I obtain the seemingly new factorization i minus 1 times 1 minus 4i. However, since i times minus i is equal to 1, this is really the same factorization. We can further extend the notion of Gaussian integers by adding yet another root of minus 1, which we will call j, into the mix. Z adjoint ij is called Lipschitz integers. Lipschitz integers are non-commutative and so thus lose the property of unique prime factorization. The Lipschitz integers also do not possess a division algorithm. That is to say that if we divide one Lipschitz integer by another, we cannot necessarily obtain a unique quotient and remainder. To remedy this issue, we can define the Hurwitz integers, numbers of the form a plus bi plus cj plus dk, where either all of a, b, c, and d are integers, or all of a, b, c, and d are half integers. The Hurwitz quaternions do have a division algorithm, but since they're still non-commutative, they do not have unique prime factorization. However, we can try to approach a notion of unique prime factorization. Factorization in the Hurwitz integers is unique up to three phenomena, which we call uni unit migration, recombination, and metacommutation. Our project studies the last of these three. So to recap, uh, the integers have both the properties of unique prime factorization and they possess a division algorithm. The Gaussian integers also possess both these properties in a less obvious way. When we extend to the Lipschitz integers, we lose both properties. And when we extend to the Hurwitz integers, we regain the property of a division algorithm but still do not have unique prime factorization. Okay, so before we can uh, talk about the phenomenon of metacommutation, we have to begin with some fundamental notions. So we'll call the conjugate of a Hurwitz integer uh, h equals of uh, the form a plus bi plus cj plus dk, uh, h sigma, which is a minus bi minus cj minus dk. This allows us to no define the re related notion of the norm, uh, which is h times h sigma, which is just the sum of the sum, the sum of the squares of the components of h. Okay. So this allows us to talk about the phenomenon of metacommutation, which we can think of as the process of swipping, swapping uh, two different uh, Hurwitz primes in a given factorization of a Hurwitz integer. And we can basically swap, uh, swap them in a way that's unique. Uh, and we can define it with the following proposition. Um, so throughout this presentation, we'll uh, di differentiate between Hurwitz primes and rational primes by using uh, capital, capital letters to denote Hurwitz primes or Hurwitz integers and lowercase uh, letters to denote rational primes, uh, which will be differentiated uh, visually but not uh, verbally. Um, so we can define the following, uh, we can define metacommutation uh, as the following proposition. So for a uh, Hurwitz integer P with norm P and a Hurwitz integer norm Q with norm Q such that uh, P and Q are relatively prime, then for a given factorization QP, there is a corresponding factorization q prime p prime, which is unique up to left associates. So basically, we can t given pq, it's equal to q prime p prime uh, up to multiplication by uh, left units. Now, as an example of this, the quaternion negative 3 plus 5i plus j plus 2k has a norm of 39. And so because the primes in the Hurwitz integers are those which have prime norm, we can factor it into a prime of norm 3 times a prime of norm 13, which specifically are 1 plus i plus j and 1 plus 2i plus 2j plus 2k. However, what metacommutation tells us is that there is also a factorization of this number as a prime of norm 13 multiplied by a prime of norm 3. And indeed, we see that this is also equal to 2 plus 3k times i minus j plus k. And in addition, what the phenomenon of metacommutation tells us is that these two new primes are unique up to left associates. Using the idea of metacommutation, 
we can define the metacommutation mapping, or permutation, which is a mapping of the prime of a specific prime of norm Q, which we will call Q, acting on the primes of a specific norm P. Now, to do this, we take each P times Q, and we can swap P times Q by metacommutation to obtain the new factorization Q prime times P prime. We then take the function which sends each prime P to the associated P prime. And this induces a permutation on the Hurwitz primes of norm P. Now, in 2013, professors Conan Kumar studied this permutation and found that its sign was equivalent to the Legendre symbol of Q on P. However, in our research, we use techniques from projective geometry to completely characterize the metacommutation mapping. So before we can discuss our results further, it's important to discuss some prerequisites and the projective geometry we use to obtain them. We define the projectivization of a mathematical object by its quotient, by the underlying field of scalars. Some relevant examples of this to our project are the projective line, which is the projectivization of non-zero points in FP squared, so the two space with the finite field of order P on each axis, and PGL2FP, the projective general linear group which is the projectivization of GL2FP, the set of all two by two invertible matrices with coordinates in FP. The below diagram depicts uh, the projectivization of F3 cubed. So this allows us to arrive at our main result, which states that the metacommutation action on Herbert's primes of a specified norm P is equivalent to the right standard action of PGL2FP and the projective line, both of which I just defined. OK, uh, so now we can sketch a proof of our uh, main result. So following the methods of Conan Kumar, we basically show that there's a correspondence between uh, primes of a particular norm P in the ring of Hurwitz integers and points on a conic x squared plus y squared plus z squared or 0 mod P. Uh, and we then we show that the metacommutation, the permutation induced by the metacommutation mapping is basically the same as the one um, that happens when you do projective transformations on this conic. Um, but even then, it's still a little complicated. So what we can do uh, is basically, because quaternions are very complicated objects, um, it's useful to turn them into matrices which are a lot more concrete. So we basically construct a matrix. So we basically use uh, construct a matrix isomorphism from, uh, which is well known, from uh, the quaternions to the set of, or we take the modulo p reduction of the Hurwitz integers uh, at a rational prime p, and then we show that it's isomorphic to the set of two by two matrices that have entries in FP. Uh, this isomorphism sends the uh, trace of a quaternion to the associated matrix trace and the norm of a quaternion to the associated determinant. Um, this uh, allows us to think about metacommutation in a much simpler way. Uh, and using the isomorphism, we can then turn this uh, action by projective transformation on the conic to into the action of PGL2FP on the projective line. This is a much simpler group action to consider because PGL2FP is simply the symmetry group of the projective line. Now, using this, we can first of all obtain some new proofs and much simpler proofs of the old results of Conan Kumar. Specifically, we can find an essentially one line proof that the sign of the map is the quadratic character of Q on P. And uh, also in Conan Kumar's paper, the number of fixed points on this map, which is given by this formula. In addition, we can obtain some new results about metacommutation, in particular regarding the cycle links, which previously have not been studied. First of all, we can show that all cycles in the permutations, which are not fixed points, so not simply points being set to themselves, have to have the same order. Also, we can characterize exactly how many such cycles have each length. So for d dividing p minus 1, there are phi of d times p times p plus 1 over 2 such permutations. For d dividing p plus 1, there are phi of d times p times p minus 1 over 2 such permutations. And for d equaling p, there are p squared minus 1. Note that here phi denotes the Euler phi function. In addition, because the method of reduction modulo p removes a lot of the structure present in the specific order over the quaternions, the results immediately generalize to any order over the quaternions, which has a division algorithm for primes of norm p. In particular, recall that the Lipschitz integers, z joint i and j, does not have a division algorithm. And so it is not immediately apparent that any of our results will extend. However, because the Lipschitz integers do have a division algorithm for all primes of odd norm, these results still extend as long as p is not equal to 2. 
So in conclusion, our results fully characterize factorization of the Hurwitz integers, as well as in all quaternion orders that possess a division algorithm for primes of a specified norm p. So we can extend our methods to higher dimensions, perhaps. The conic that we used in the course of our proof is, in fact, a dimension one Severy Brewer variety. If we were to investigate similar metaphenomenon in the octonions, we might investigate higher dimensional Severy Brewer varieties. We'd like to thank Henry Cohn for suggesting this area of research. We'd also like to thank the Clay Mathematics Institute and the Promise Program for making this research possible. And we'd like to thank Raphael Singer for his invaluable guidance with our research. Last but not least, we'd like to extend a huge thank you to the Siemens Foundation, Discovery Education, and the George Washington University for giving us this time and unique opportunity to present our results. Here are our references. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>